Okay, it's project time. I'm in the garage here, tight spaces, with my 2007 Lexus RX 350. Uh, my last post was, I believe, on replacing emergency brakes. Uh, this time we're going to replace the McPherson struts in the rear and I'm um, going to show you what's going on with them and why I need to replace them and then we'll go over what I think the tools I'm going to need to do use and then um, we'll get to it. Okay here we're at the uh, back driver's side. I'm going to assume everybody knows how to take off a tire and jack up a car and put it on jack stands. You can see I also have a, a hydraulic jack for a, a third support of the weight. Um, but this is the strut assembly and this is the coil spring that goes in the strut assembly and you can see that this boot is shattered. You can also see how uh, wet this uh, bottom part is from the the hydraulics leaking out of that. So I need to replace this strut. Um, it's always best to replace them in in pairs. So I got two. The other one's making noise as well. It just isn't leaking as bad. And so there's going to be some things that we're going to have to disassemble. And um, one of the things I should note is that when you're getting um, struts, you can get a whole assembly with with the spring included. Um, might be a low budget, inexpensive, eighty dollar part. Um, but uh, you might su your ride might suffer. So since this is a Lexus and it has a good ride already, I'm going to go with um, uh, original equipment manufacturer. And when I did that, I don't get the springs automatically. So I'm actually going to take these springs off and transfer them to the, the new struts because there's nothing wrong with those. And so that'll be part of this process as well as is taking off the springs and transferring them to the new strut. So now let's, now you saw the problem, let's go over the tools we think we need. Okay, I've laid out some tools that I think I'm going to need. First of all, to remove that, um, that spring off of each strut, I'm going to need spring compressors. So I don't know if you know this or not, but I got these from Advanced Auto. You can, basically, it's a tool loaner program, they call it. You basically pay for this, and as long as you take it back and you have your receipt, that um, you don't have to pay anything. You're basically borrowing the tool. So most people don't own these. So that'll be a something comes in handy to be able to move those springs from one strut to the new one. An assortment here of wrenches and sockets, you know, extensions. I have a, a smaller extension and a longer extension. Sometimes if something's in the way, you might need a universal. I try to, especially with these types of bolts with rust, I try to um, stick with a half inch drive. Sometimes you might be able to get away with three eighths drive. And then this is another handy piece that it converts from the half inch drive to the three eighths because some of my sockets here are three eighths drive, but I can still use a, a half inch um, wrench to be able to uh, work in conjunction with those sockets. And then there's deep well, there's six point versus 12 point sockets. Um, if you can get away with a six point, you get a much better grip and I might need two of them. So I've got a set there. One of the pieces is going to need an Allen, an Allen key, um, wrench to be able to hold, um, one of the nuts. It's always good to have a wire brush to make sure that, you know, you can brush off your parts and get your sockets on it appropriately. Always, you know, wear safety goggles. Um, my safety goggles have readers in them because sometimes I need that to see what I'm doing. And then I call these the persuasion pieces. You know, sometimes you might need a breaker bar for leverage to break loose some of those rusted bolts. Uh, you might need to pry apart uh, for the strut to come out. And, of course, a hammer sometimes helps you in conjunction with your, your breaker bar to kind of snap loose that bolt um, to get it free. And then you can use the regular ratchet from there. So I didn't mention, of course, you know, a jack. Um, you might need a second jack to release some of the suspension pieces, um, but I'll kind of identify as, a, as we go through that or if I have to get a different tool. But that should be the basics that you would need. Um, and in all said and done with the, without paying for the springs, I am uh, in about $300 for this repair. And that includes, you know, the new boots, 
new struts and um, new mounting brackets for the tops of the struts as well. So once we get one apart and we transition it over, you'll kind of see what all the new parts are. Okay, so now we're back at the strut, the old one, and we want to start figuring out how we're going to take this one out. First of all, you look up the top, you don't see anything because there are going to be three bolts in the inside of the rear um, trunk space, whatever you want to call it in an SUV, the cargo space. Uh, there's a, a plastic thing that will pop off, you'll be getting three bolts there, so we're not worried about that. So as you come down, you're going to see here's a connection right here, and that's going to your suspension, some of your suspension. This is the piece that's going to need that Allen wrench um, and a socket as well at the same time, so you can use an open end wrench there with that Allen wrench. You see these two big bolts here, and those are going to have to come off. So you've got that's where I'm going to need double sockets or a socket and a wrench to get those two big bolts off. You see another piece hanging off the left side here that's just holding this hose or wire. And then, of course, there's another one in the back for your um, brake line that'll need to come off. So, good idea for these, and I, I hit these about a week ago with some PB blaster or some kind of a, a, a penetrant oil to get and break up any rust that's in the threads. I'm going to hit that again now, and then we'll start taking these off. Okay, I'll show you. Here's the, the PB Blaster that I use. This one has a, a straw that you can uh, have it go up or push it down out of the way and get more of a direct spray. Um, but this has a nice long straw in it. So what you can do is just pour a little out. You want to hit that back side and this joint also between the Allen screw and the nut. So you just kind of soak that real good. You could do the back side as well, just to make sure everything's loosening up. And you'll kind of do that on all these joints here, whether it's a nut or the bolt head. Just make sure you're getting good coverage on that to loosen everything up. I'm going to go do the rest of these. I also put a an old t-shirt on the ground. It'll catch any drips. I'm not worried about each and every drip. Um, and then you can kind of use that to keep your workspace clean. Okay, so I've hit this with PB Blaster a couple times. Do that some more. What you're going to need for this guy is a 14 millimeter on the nut and a 5 millimeter on the inside for the Allen screw. And you can kind of work it back and forth to be able to release that. And there's a lot of gunk in there. So what you might want to do is you know, go a couple turns, remove that, get your wire brush, because you don't want to try to drive some of that debris through all the threads because you don't want to have to replace this. It's already bad enough to replace the strut. So just keep this lubricated and keep going. Once you get it free with the box end, I like using the box end because it's on an offset, but then once you get it started, you should be able to put this on and use the open end part. It's easier to move it back and forth. And I can, you can feel it loosen up, it gets tighter as it's going through the, the gunk, but then as it goes through the top of the threads, you can start feeling it loosening up. So it's getting pretty loose right now. And then once you have this free, 
if you haven't jacked up the uh, hub to the exact right location there's going to be tension on this so I'll show you in a minute that we did jack up the hub some so if this is loose loose then it's I accidentally got it to exactly where it needs to be but I'm doubtful all right you can see that this is pretty well off now all right so there you have the nut you'll want to kind of wire brush that and make sure you clean it up before you put it back on and you can see there's still pressure on this so if you look underneath the wheel I have a scissor jack here so and I have just a rag underneath the hub here to take some of that weight off and as you raise this you'll get to a point where you'll see that that thread will become looser or maybe I'm already past it let's go the other way because you got to find the right way where that linkage doesn't have any strain on it there we're getting there Alright, so there it's out. So now you know you're at the right level. So you'll have to do that again when you want to hook this back up. You want to make sure that, you know, because you've got this tension here with your suspension, and that's what's putting tension on it. So you can move it a little bit um, to be able to line it up, but you just want to make sure you're not going to damage those threads, otherwise, you won't be able to put that nut back on. And clean this end up again good too, because it, it gets difficult to put that five millimeter Allen wrench in there. If this is all gummed up, you don't have five good surfaces, and you'll start losing that capability. All right, so that one's done. Now we're going to move on to this one here. I have to figure out. That's probably, yeah, that's a 10 millimeter one. So we'll take our socket off of. And if you find that it's the back end of it's turning, then you'll need to uh, make sure you throw a wrench on that. But I have a feeling this is just a threaded piece, so that wasn't too bad. So this is just a small bolt here. Again, you want to make sure you clean those up. Wire brush this all when you're putting it back in so you don't have problems with it in the future. So that's out of the way. The next one we're going to do is the, uh, the back where the brake line is. I'll move my light and uh, reposition myself so I can show you that better. Okay, so now we're under the car looking up at the back of the brake lining. So there's basically a, a bolt here holding this round oval um, plate. And to get around the drive shaft here, um, I chose to use a universal, just get a little bit of an extension with a 12 mil millimeter socket because that gives me a perfect distance. If I put my short extension on it, I'd run into the other support. So this ends up working out being a perfect size. I don't really need the universal from a standpoint of you know going at a different angle, but I do need it from a length perspective. So it makes it tougher than it would normally be to unscrew it. I guess you could also go with the uh, the box wrench or an open end wrench too, and you could be behind the drive shaft here. But I don't feel like searching for that. And the good thing about sockets, it stays on the the head of the bolt a little better. And I can feel the resistance of it, the threads driving through the back side, the dirt and gunk.
you can see everything loosening up there too. Alright, so here's the bolt. Pretty gummed up. Again, you can take your wire. If you have a um, like a buffer wheel, you can use that. And you can see now this just slides out. So that kind of bolts in place. So we'll kind of keep that out of the way and make sure that's not hitting anything when we're pulling this actual strut out. All right, so now we're left with the two main bolts. Okay, so now here's what my setup is for these top two bolts. The nuts on this end, the bolt heads on this end. This might not move at all, but you want to put a wrench there. And I find these are three quarters are fitting. Um, I don't know why it would be three quarters, but it's not 18, it's not 19. Um, so three quarters fit. So I have a breaker bar with an extension so you're not right up against the, the back of the rotor. Um, you can see the next bolt down below. It's even more difficult to get to. But So now I've got the breaker bar. I've got more leverage. I'll pull up on the breaker bar and hold down on this one. You can hear it. Wow, I just broke my extension. So I have to get a different one. <laughs> that's the first time that's happened. All right, now I've got a different extension. Let's see if we can break this loose now. I need to hammer on it. Wow, that's really tight. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to come think about a, another game plan for cracking this loose. So after a lot of pain and suffering, we uh, were able to get the top one loose with the uh, this big long breaker bar. It's probably about 20 inches or so. Um, just And it's hard because you're pulling up on it to get this one loose. Um, on the bottom one, no matter what we did, we tried getting close, we tried getting far away. We even tried putting the breaker bar in the back side and using a scissor jack to try to pry down on it. Um, but it wasn't until we ended up heating up the nut with my um, propane torch. We heated up the nut and we were fi finally able to, again awkwardly, be able to um, get it started. And once we got it started, um, it worked pretty well. Still kind of warm, it'll make your socket warm too. And we may have melted the CV boot a little bit. Hopefully once we get this out, we'll see if we did irreparable damage and we got to get a CV boot too. But, so now that's, that's out. And we could do the same for the top one. So you can see how corroded these threads are. From being, and this is probably, let's see, it's a 2017 or 20, 2007 vehicle. Um, we've had it since uh, 2015, I believe, and I think these are probably the original um, struts. So um, we might need to, uh, you know, bang these out too, um, and hopefully we don't mess up the threads too much, but. Once we get these out, then we'll go inside and take the nuts off up at the top of the mounting and be able to release this. Okay, so now we're up in the uh, cargo compartment, and this nice little padded area is where the um, the top of the strut is, and this just snaps in place. So you can you know put a screwdriver under there, just lift it up, and then it, it comes out. You see it slides in there and then pushes down with these little parts right here. So you can move that out of the way, and there's basically three main holes, these two and this one. So this is the top of the strut. You can see the little nuts down in there. Now one of the tricks, and this is a 14 millimeter, one of the tricks that I read on or listened to on 
YouTube is don't take these all the way out because if you lose the nut down in there, it's going to be hard to fish out. You'd have to take this all apart. So get it really close to the top and then use a magnet. I only have a little magnet, but you should be able to use a magnet to make sure you can spin it. Um, and it should be pretty loose by the time you get it to the end of the thread. So just don't take it all the way off. So we'll go ahead and test that out. And as soon as I broke it loose, you could feel that it wasn't bad. So you can kind of keep checking. I'm pretty close to the top of the threads. And you might be able to use, yeah. So I'm using the magnet to unscrew it the rest of the way. I guess if you can get your fingers in there, you might be able to do it as well. It's almost off. You can feel it. Sometimes it it moves, sometimes it doesn't, and I'm just sliding along the nut. If I had a stronger magnet, it would be better. Oh, so close. Come on. I guess the other thing you could do is, you know, put a nail or something down on the top of the stud so you could get it. Come on. There we go. See? So, that did work really well. And it's nice and clean, so you don't really have to worry about needing to use a socket the whole way. So, I'm not going to do the other two on camera, but you got the idea. Don't lose these down there because it would be hard to fish out, and there's a lot of crevices down inside there. Okay, so now we were just up under the in the cargo area, and we pulled all three of those bolts out, so this should be able to come down now. And again, we have this here. You can see that it's starting to get it's loose. It's already come out of the top here. So we should be able, you want to make sure you keep your brake line out of the way and you keep the sensor line out of the way. Um, and you're going to want to support the weight of this because you got the CV boot right underneath. And then Alright, we're loose. So you want to bring it come over by the sensor but avoid the, and remember it's heavy. So there you have it. So you can see how bad it was, how much this was leaking. This boot is shredded. This is uh, another damper. Um, I got a new, I got a new boot and a new damper. We're going to move these springs. So you want to pay attention to how this is. Remember, these bolt holes are in the front. You want to line this up and make sure you got your new part and you got the right side and you've got all the right tabs with the holes and everything so you can put your stuff back and we'll use those spring compressors on both sides of this to break the to spring and I even have a new mount I didn't know what shape this would be in potentially I could reuse this but I think it was like 20 or 30 dollars I didn't want to take the chance um, so I got all new so there it is and now let's go match up what we ordered from the store okay so here we have the the new strut installed. Um, I'll have to show you on the other side again how we got this in, but we basically put it in here. We had to kind of go down behind here and then up with those three bolts up into the top, go up in the top side and put those bolts in so you can hold it in place. And then for these two bolts, these main two bolts here, you have to kind of finagle this the whole rotor assembly. It can kind of pivot and move down and in a little bit. And I kind of put a screwdriver in this top hole to kind of hold it while we can get things lined up because there's a fair amount of pressure against it. It would be really hard to do that if you didn't have the top in because it gets kind of so long. I should also note that this little rubber piece here, it didn't come with a new rubber piece. Um, so we reused the old one. Again, it's just to keep it from squeaking and moving around on the spring here. 
And the other kind of trouble we had is there, I ordered a boot that came with this extra shock absorber here. It's kind of like a, a sturdy foam uh, or sturdy kind of spongy plastic. Um, I ordered that, but then the mount came with the boot already. So I didn't use the separate boot. I'm just using the extra dampener that's in there and I put it in the regular mount that had its boot. And so uh, this, this is a nice long boot that'll kind of keep that shaft clean. And I, I changed the springs. So we'll show you that on the next one too with the springs. You have the compressors you can borrow, um, squeeze these together and move it over. We did have a little bit of trouble getting things lined up and making sure the mounting bolts lined up properly. It's probably best to mark everything. We took a picture, but we still, as the springs decompressed, um, things moved a little bit. So you have to keep checking that and take your time. Um, so now we've got this in loose. We're going to tighten it up. We have to anchor this back to the front. Um, we've got to put this tie rod back in here. Um, it's going to have to be jacked up a little to be able to do that. And then we've also got the brake line that goes in the back here that will mount as well and then we'll be done. So, all in all, it did take a couple hours, especially because you're playing with the springs. Um, that was the most difficult part. Plus, taking these bolts off, that was really hard. Um, having to heat one up to be able to break it free. Um, and then I, I put these on the grinder, a wire wheel, so I could clean them all up, clean up the threads so they go on a lot easier. Okay, we're on the driver, or the passenger side, uh, the rear, and uh, I wanted to kind of go over this aspect of things. When you pull the old um, assembly off, um, you can see how rotted the, the boot is, and, and here's this extra dampener. But the springs are in good shape, and there's, this one isn't leaking as much. But one of the things you want to pay attention to is when you're ordering your, your shock and spring assemblies, or your strut assemblies, whatever you want to call it, um, make sure you spend extra time on getting the right part, the right car. You know, again, it's a Lexus RX350, um, right engine size. Sometimes you might have to look it up by VIN. But another good thing to do once you get it out, set them side by side. You know, you should see that you've got the same flange and the same mounting points. Um, now, you'll notice there's a little bit of a difference here from a profile standpoint. This one kind of comes straight across. You see the bracket below. This one has the bracket below the new one. It doesn't come straight across. It kind of contours in. But as long as the whole pattern matches up, and this does, then you're in good shape. So you want to just make sure you pay attention to that. Make sure you bought the right thing before you start compressing the spring. Another thing, so this one doesn't sit, um, sit on its own like the old one because of that angle. But it'll come potentially with a a capturing device for that shock absorber part so you'll just release the pressure off of that and that'll pull off we will show you that a little later and then I want to show the um, the spring compressors so again you can rent these um, you basically buy them and then you give them back and they'll give you your money back and so these um, these clip pins can go and capture and we'll show you this in detail but you'll basically go on both sides of the spring here and here make sure when you're you're lining it up you don't want to put it such that the bottom of this is gonna gonna hit and you won't be able to get access to it so you have to put them in such a way sometimes you'll put them the opposite way so the ratchet you're using is um, gonna be able to clear things the other thing I want to talk about is so I decided to replace this mount and when I ordered the parts and it says for the rear, and these are KYB, original manufacturing. But I decided to get the, the boot and this extra dampener um, as, a, as a part. And it's not specific to, you know, rear, left or rear, right. And it's an SB105. But when I ordered the mount, the SM5491, um, the picture, pictures I've seen were just this mount part. So I didn't think I was getting a boot. But this is a whole molded thing, but you don't get the extra dampener. So what I'm going to do, this um, separate boot was only like $12. So I'm just going to use the dampener inside of the other nicer mount um, to replace that. And you can see that's basically what I had on there was that molded mount. 
So I'm going to get started and try to set this up um, so you can see us um, basically compress this spring to the point where we can take the stand this one up. Um, we're going to compress it to the point where there's no pressure on this mount and then we'll take this top nut off and then we'll be able to move this off, take the spring, move it over to the other side. Um, the other thing I did partially is, you know, all those rusty bolts, you saw how bad and corroded they were. Um, I decided to, you know, clean them up. So here's basically what one looked like before and here's what it looks like after I cleaned it up. So you can see, you know, the nut, no gunk in there. This one there is, just want to show a comparison. Um, and the way I do it, you can see I have a, a plumbing tool here, but that works well to get inside of those, those threads on a nut. And then for this part, what I do is I take my, um, I've got a wheel grinder here, you know, stone on one side and wire brush on the other. And I'll use this to kind of go around it. You can do it by hand with a wire brush. This just gets it a lot cleaner. And you could do as little or as much as you want, but it just makes it easier in assembling to kind of clean off all these parts. You don't have to buy new ones. Um, as long as, you know, the head's still in good shape, it's got the nice sides, um, then you don't have to worry about that. And it, and it cleans up kind of nice. Okay, back to the uh, strut assembly. The other thing you want to note um, before you take this apart, because as things loosen up, you lose track of where everything is you'll see that there's a bottom of the spring and a top of the spring. And so normally you're gonna see some kind of a mark. So this indicates where the bottom is gonna be. And on this particular one, again, we'll reuse this bottom kind of rubbery piece, but it goes right here. And if you tilt it on its side, you can see right where that little dent is. So that's where the bottom of the spring will go. And you can kind of match that up the same thing over here that same dent so the bottom of your spring will go here and the same thing pay attention to where the top of the spring is um, on this particular one you can see a green dot the last one had a pink dot and if that's signifying the front but the butt the top of the spring is actually kind of on the back side so once you set the bottom, you just want to make sure you're putting your mount in the same direction. So on this side, this is the front that bolts in. If you go straight up, that's when you're going to have your single bolt for your mount. And then the back two will be in the back. Um, so that way you can make sure you don't have to keep squeezing this and moving it around to make sure it's going to line up with the holes up in the cargo space. Okay, here you see the... Uh, the spring compressor is installed on the spring. You, again, you have a, a, a grooved part that you can see. Um, that's where the spring will ride in. And then you can have these pins. Uh, I don't think you'll have any trouble with these popping off, but um, that's just an extra safety and you always want to use extra safety. So once you put those pins in place, now you can see that this one's a little close. I'm probably not going to be able to get a socket on there the whole way. Um, and, and these are three quarter inch, so you can use an open end and uh, continue to keep cranking. So again, you're gonna tighten these and that'll squeeze the, the springs together. And you wanna do it you know, a few turns on each side, unless you have two people, you can do them both at the same time. And you're just gonna to wanna to squeeze those until you still, you feel some play, and then you'll be able to take this bolt off. So I'm not gonna do that on camera. Um, it'll just take, Take too much time and uh, I'm sure you don't want to watch this little boring but just go slow make sure that you're not binding um, things aren't stuck you can see that I've got a gap here I've got a gap here so as you screw this in those will go further down so you just got to make sure you pay attention to positioning get at the bolts and have travel down the bottom and I'll show you when it's off okay now this might not look like a lot changed because you can't really tell it's compressed. But the key is now you can see that this is loose. So there's not pressure on here. So now what we're gonna do, and sometimes to get this off, you might have to hold on to this shaft. You can, you know, again, you're not gonna use this, you're gonna throw it away. So just, you could put some channel locks on there to hold it. 
and we're going to take this bolt off to be able to remove the spring and put it on the next one. Actually, let me correct something. You don't have to hold on to this shaft. I mean, it will spin if it's not put on right, but if you look at the top of the mount, you see how there's kind of like a circle and an oval, and there's a matching on, it's kind of hard to see, but there's basically a keyway on the side here. So as this gets put on, that holds it in place. So you can hold the mount and break this free. And then you've got a, a washer there, that, a big kind of washer that sits, and the nut sits on top of that. So when that goes on, it'll fit in place, and then you're holding this to crank this. So it gives you a much better grabbing surface so you can make sure you can torque that down. And then you're going to want to save this because with the new mount, you don't get a new one of these. So hang on to that. Don't lose it. Okay, here's a visual of the old spring moving back over to the new uh, assembly. Here's that little divot. So that's where the bottom of the spring is. I've transferred over this um, rubber gasket, for lack of a better word. Um, and you can see it's sitting on there pretty good. And then, so again, with my combination here, this is going to go on first. This is better, you know, this is kind of a tight fit. Um, so it would be hard to get this boot over top of this if you put this on first. So I'm just going to thread this up through here and have it be there. The other thing I want to show you, I didn't want to put that in yet, is because if we look down, <laughs> this is going to be hard to show you too. Uh, if you look down inside there, see if I can get the right lighting. That's a little better. Now you can see, I'm squishing the boot some so you can see that oblong, because remember, when you put this boot on, it has to fit to this keyway. See how there's a flat side on both sides so that you can mount this back on. So again, so it's going to be this white part first, then the boot. Um, don't worry about the arrangement of this yet, because when you set it down on there and get that keyway, then you can slide it. Um, and then once you slide it on there, then you'll put that washer on top of the mount. So you have the mount first, and then this will go on top of it. And then the nut. One of the things I wanted to say, this is the nut that came with the strut assembly, and it's just a regular nut. The one that was on there, see how it's more rounded. So that's going to be a better mating surface for this bushing. So it's better to reuse the old nut because then that'll mate up there better um, to yank, yank down that, uh, that mount for a more even distribution. So I would reuse the old nut and throw the new one away. All right, so I'm going to put this back together now, and I'll show you the final product. Okay, now you can see I used a block of wood since this is on an angle just to have that standing straight so you can see it. Um, again, you want to pay attention to make sure that the bottom of your spring back in there um, didn't move and it's still in that, that dented part right here. So that is still in place. And then you want to make sure, see your boot comes down all the way. You can see a little bit of that, that metal um, top of the cylinder. Um, and then make sure we started off that we had this bolt in the front that's lined up. Now, what you could do, again, I, as long as you have this pushed down and seated, then you can actually, you know, crank this down, hold on to this, make sure it's tight. If this top mount isn't in the right spot, you can still spin this a little bit um, because, again, that shaft, that whole shaft will spin. And make sure I don't let this fall off. And so now I'm just going to slowly allow these to release, and then this gap is going to close and it's gonna come up against this mount. And then at that point, you won't be able to spin it anymore. So just make sure everything's aligned well, release the springs, then you'll be ready to install it in the vehicle. Again, these bolts come with it. I suggest using the ones that you originally had on your car. You could use these as well. Um, I just like the other original ones better. Up to you. Okay, here is the finished product. Um, 
you can see nice and shiny you can see the, the springs are still in good shape um, still have the rubber coating no rust on them so that's why I kept the um and then uh, the boots covering that nice in the shaft everything's mounted securely and then again I think the hardest part of this whole job was these two bolts right here and on this side we're on the passenger side both of them we had to heat up to be able to crack these loose and once they cleaned up they slid right back in again this could be trouble because of this little allen key make sure that's clean uh, before you try to take that off and so the connections are back on everything looks good we're going to go ahead and put the wheels on and wrap it up okay on a final note i put the tires on took it for a test drive and everything seems fine so far the only thing i did notice is after my test drive this uh, boot was kind of bunched up i did have to kind of pull it down and and straighten it so that you know now that it's compressed it is a little different with the weight of the the wheels on it and the spring compress and that boot kind of bunched up a little bit and it was a little twisted so i just kind of reached my fingers in here and uh on both sides and pulled that down to straighten things out and i'll check on it again after another drive but i think it'll be fine so I think we are done. Another successful um, adventure on car repairs. And I definitely saved myself a bunch of money. One strut by itself um, from the dealer was over $300. And I got moved the springs, so I didn't have to pay for those. But I spent $300 on all the new stuff I bought. Um, and, you know, that doesn't even include labor or the other parts that they were going to want to charge me. So this definitely would have been in the thousands. And I did it all for probably 10, 12 hours and 300 bucks.